Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Signature Event, checking in in Minnesota with 5956B Bangarang. Currently at the end of day one, ranked fifth, so congratulations on your progress so far for that. Uh, Bangarang coming out of Florida, last year had three event wins and an excellence award as well too, so really looking for big things here at this Signature Event. Let's talk more about uh, the robot this year. Really great aesthetic looking robot, but a lot of great functionality. This uh, claw we'll be diving a bit more into, some of their custom PID control, and a lot of great other functions we'll be diving into this robot. So let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Michael, let's talk about some of the iterations of this robot. I mean, this is an early signature event, and we were talking earlier, and you're already on iteration number three of this robot. So I'd love to hear more about some of the major changes. And then uh, how are you approaching at the signature event some of your match strategy, too? So uh, the first robot of the season, we started making it uh, only days after Worlds was finished. And so really all we had to go off of was past games. So we looked at mainly uh, Roundup, and we looked at Tipping Point. So we took the tipping point, point flaps for our first iteration and we had flaps all the way down the robot, including picking them up. It was just one stage onto the robot with a plastic hood dropping them down onto the goal. Uh, we decided that it really didn't have enough pressure on the hood and we simply weren't able to get it working consistently. And so we kind of ended just with the intake done and decided that our first prototype would just end at that. And so we then started getting inspiration from other teams who had started to build Hook, which you can see a lot throughout this competition. And we did the same thing where we got the intake all the way through with the Hook. Um, actually, we used a first stage flex wheel, like this one right here. And the tuning from flex wheel to Hook was the main drawback that we didn't really like uh, as well as the hook has to land on the goal at almost a perfect angle to score so that robot only lasted about a week sure. before we started working on robot number three which is this one uh, we decided that simple is best uh, for the early season because we'd rather not go for anything super fancy and just something that works consistently well uh, that's why we ended on full flex wheel, except for this little flat bit at the top, which Guy will talk about later. And this simply works just by you know, spinning it up and putting it out onto the intake with these flex wheels up here acting so we don't have to uh, band the hood down more than normal. Let's take a moment to talk about match strategy and how you're approaching it up. Uh, has it even changed like over after day one here and how you've been, uh, what you thought maybe this game would be and then how it's been throughout the day? Talk to me more about it. Well, luckily North Florida is a pretty competitive region. So we've actually been able to have uh, a scrimmage before coming to nice. Mall of America. And this included some of our other local friendly teams and ACE. Uh, so we had um, a pretty good idea of what we thought we would see coming into Mall. And that was, um, one team sitting in a corner uh, while the other team focused on wall stakes. So one team would fill their goal and pass into the corner uh, and then go to wall stakes. Well, the team that was less equipped for wall stakes would just sit in that corner. Uh, however, on day one in really the first match that we saw with Gremlin, uh, where they were able to sit in two corners and almost completely prevent the opponents from doing anything else, uh, changed our strategy, strategy to rely even heavy, heavier on corner camping. So our initial goal is always to get both corners. And then since we had that initial practice, if, we're, if we lose one positive corner, then we pass our goal to our teammate and whoever's better equipped goes for the wall stakes like we had originally planned. Let's get a little more into the robot here itself. Let's talk about some of the custom PID you've been doing. And Steven, I'd love to hear more about that, uh, how you're approaching the programming aspect this year. Uh, anything you want to touch into, like what you're doing for autos or anything like that too? Yeah, so I'll just start off with what we coded. We coded VexCode Pro V5. Um, when we were looking at VexCode and then Pros, 
we really balance the two options and most of our org actually uses Vexcode so we thought it'd just be easier to help them out especially we have seven teams a lot of newer teams it's nice to be able to help them out you know if they need help because we do mentor most of them so getting into our PID we knew that obviously there's many different templates out there and we wanted to really make something that's our own so we looked at uh, many different other many other templates. JAR template is what we heavily uh, inspired ours off of, as well as just looking at other codes, such as ACES code from over under, ACES code from spin up, really inspired it. So with our PID, we actually do something pretty special, and that is we run a PID loop on our drive encoders. So our drive encoders and our inertial sensor at the same time. So what this does is it allows us to stay on our uh, angle heading while we're driving straight or backwards. And that just kind of prevents, if somehow we got hit, sometime, somehow something happens, we're able to just continue going straight. Or if we want to, we can also put this angle at a different angle so that it'll do a curved turn if we need a really tight fitting. That definitely helped us. We had the same code in over under worlds, and that definitely helped us getting uh, those sweeps that we really needed, especially for skills. Um, with Autonomous for uh, this game, we really looked at where the rings are and what is even possible in the 15 seconds. So we decided that maybe making the best autonomous isn't the goal, but making something really reliable. So our autonomous, um, on one side of the field, it only gets two rings, on alliance, one alliance stake and one on mobile go and touches. So we can always get the AVP. We've got AVP three out of our four matches so far. So that's very important. And on the other side, we get three on a mobile goal, one on the alliance stake, and then we touch again. So that's four total, two top rings. And that's really uh, just helped us really with autonomous win point, which we found to be very important at a competition like this where everybody's so good. You just have to make sure you focus on those small details and make it very reliable. Yeah, you're right. The AWP is so important in this game, and it's just going to continue to keep getting more important as we go through. So glad that you have that uh, forethought on that and looking to see, of course, see how that continues for your team throughout the competition here. Uh, we got to talk a little bit more about some of the mechanical features of this robot. A lot of great stuff. We teased some of it uh, early during the intro on here. So, uh, Guy, talk to me about, you got a lot of great stuff. This claw, I think, is a big centerpiece for a robot, but also you got a nice hood on top there, a great intake. Talk to me more about what you have. Yeah, so I'll start with the intake. Uh, it went through, so we we had first robot iteration stuff. It was all flaps. That kind of worked, not wasn't the best, so we scrapped it. What we ended on with this is we tried all flex wheel. We kind of needed something to bridge the gap. Um, it had difficulty when we had all flex wheels getting onto the goal. Um, we realized that the flaps kind of helped just take it just enough to these flex wheels up here to get onto the goal. So that's kind of how we ended up there with that. Um, we went through a lot of different placements with the flaps, and we staggering them works best right now. We had to change it throughout this comp, uh, but that's basically how we end up with the intake. Can we see a ring come in and demonstrate how that process works? Uh, yes, I like the little uh, bowl here to catch it. That's nice. So, very cool on that. Uh, and then uh, your claw mechanism that you have on here. Uh, talk to me about uh, what the usage is for this. We've seen a couple teams implement this, but I really like the overall design that you guys are doing for this. Yeah. So we. We just needed something that would grab it really simple and put it up on the stake. What we did was we, originally this was a full length, like this, there wasn't that, um, the hinge in there. And it was out of size when we had it full. Um, so what we had to do is we had to add the hinge that we actually just cut in half, um, put a piston on it. And now that's, it works to stay in size and it helps um, when we do our autos and stuff. It, we realized it actually helps. We don't have to move the arm. We can just kind of fling it down and that um, gets the, the ring right on the goal. Um, the claw, it's really, it's just that there's air in it, so I can't really pull it up easy yet. Um, it's pretty simple. Yeah, just a half cut um, on a piston, clamps it down nice and tight. We added mesh on there, so it helps with the grip. Um, without it, it kind of just slid around everywhere. So, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty simple thing we added on, but it really makes a difference. I mean, you're talking earlier, simple is what a lot of times makes great robots on things. And I think your team has really embraced that simplicity in a very positive way uh, as well, too, for this robot. So, uh, Banana Rang, we really appreciate the time telling us more about your machine for this. We can't wait to see how you do uh, throughout the rest of the signature event. So, good luck qualifying for uh, Vex Worlds as well, too. And, of course, we look forward to seeing your progress throughout the rest of the season. Thanks a lot for taking the time, and good luck the rest of the way. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. 
To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.